cost of living and bad governance. Enough is Arewa. Enough. Arewa. Okay. Arewa. Okay, thank you very much. You know, so they don't talk come now. So that view now don't hit uh, 1.3 million views already. And people are sharing it rapidly. So, um, yeah, no, but me talk up. Now make me carry account. Give on, I say, that's all we see them. As we see them, that's all they present them. Now go on, I go bless you, my people. Let's hear from our panelists. I'm going to talk to, I prioritize Mr. Alex. Uh, Mr. Alex, please, I'd like you to talk to us. Good evening to you. Uh, you have eight minutes to talk to us. Yes, thank you, my amigos, Kore, my social media, Pichichi, of course, my, my social media, Baluma Luma, thank you for your consistency. Uh, I want to say thank you for doing this work, pro bono, publico, cosmos, doing it for the public, that is. My fellow panelists, thank you. I don't take it for granted that I'm being prioritized. It has, uh, there is no hidden agenda about that, obviously. I'm talking from a third world country like Nigeria. It's not easy to keep, um, you know, um, to keep that vibe. It's not easy. It takes a lot to have your battery charged, your phone recharged, or your Wi-Fi running. Thank you, guys. Uh, everybody that comes early, and um, my, uh, I take your space um, by this priority. I say thank you. It's not a right. It's a privilege, and I'm very um, humble uh, uh, with this gesture. My, those on the comment section, I greet you, viewers, of course, worldwide. <laughs> It is, um, <laughs> we are in a state of, a real state of pisma disma. It's, I mean, we, it's all, listen, listen, it's a foundational problem. When the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? So right now, all these things you are seeing is a manifestation of the foundation. Exactly what Odumengo Ojuku saw. Exactly. So this man coming on air to defend Tunubu, as if it's not Tunubu that said that he said go easy, go undoubtedly produced or delivered Buhari to be a president, the same Tunubu, under the same auspices, that is under the same political party. So it's just a roller coaster. It's just a bandwagon. We are still going to continue in this circle of wickedness, this circle of, you know, corruption, this circle of heartless behavior by leaders it, it, I mean, it's going to continue until it's going to explode on its own it's going to explode because people would have to come out at some point it's like when a way like a, um, a big fish dies you know it starts swelling up at some point it starts to explode so we are we are getting there since we we wouldn't come out on our own as nigerians something with something bigger than us and them in power, we drag us out. So I, I I don't support the view of this man, neither do I support the view of the other man, because this other guy was alive when, when Buhari was doing this this same nepotism, sectitism. Under Buhari, the I mean the most powerful four positions in Nigeria was held by a full by a full anime. Talking about the president, talking about the um, the you know uh, Anthony General, talking about the IG of police, name it. If I mean the most juicy positions in Nigeria in federal government were all Fulanis. Even in a just state here, NMPC, MPDC, anything federal government, you just see a Fulani guy there talking to you in English. You just quickly deduce that this is a Fulani. He will just tell you. If you ask him, where are you from? I'm a Fulani person from uh, Jigawa, from uh, Daura, whatever. So it's going to continue exactly what we should have avoided in 1967 when the country was divided. Unfortunately, the dream of Ojuku was cut short by the no vanquish, no victor war in 1970 after the civil war. We must realize that there is no way, there is no way. Now I'm talking as a professional now, as a political scientist. There is no way you can solve the Nigerian problem without addressing the 1967 war, 1970, how it ended, the remote causes of the war, the immediate causes, and the 1914 amalgamation. That is where the problem is. This is where some people in the north are running from, some, some northern Kaba. You cannot fix the roof when the foundation is already torn apart you can't run from it this is where this is what they don't want to hear 
This is exactly what most corrupt certain politicians, Eastern politicians, they don't want to hear. The use of demons of this world, the occultists of this world, the obasakis of this world, even the lucky benedictions of this world, these are the things they don't want to hear. The ambassadors of this world, these are the things they don't want. Jonathan, good luck tried in, in 2014. Organizing the National Confab. Everybody was ably represented. Every, everybody was there. Every tribe was there. Billions of taxpayers' money was spent. Meetings, you know, people deliberated. Res I mean, we came at conclusions. And those things, those recommendations are still in the presidential villa. You can't give what you don't have. Worry based on his illiteracy swept it under the carpets. And illiterates, with respect to illiterates, they sometimes there are people that didn't go to university. Education is, I mean, wisdom is from God. But now we are we are talking about the world is evolving, and there is um, you know, you you and, and you must grow with it. You can't just run a country the way you want. We must go back to 1914. We must go back to, you know, 1967. There's no way we can do it. Oduku said it. We cannot exist with what the white men, the colonial masters gave us. We must free ourselves. Well, many people took bribe. They went behind the curtains, went to Buckingham Palace, went to different um, places. They spoiled everything. Now we are back to square one. We are back to square one. And we'll continue to suffer it. In Naira to dollar, I said before election, it's going to hit 5,000 Naira. I said it. Why? Because this is my feed. This is my profession. I said Nigeria is going to be like Somalia. I said it. It's, it's my feed by the grace of God. I can defend myself anywhere, anytime with my area of specialization. So, and we are getting there. I, I said it. You can't put a drug baron to be your president. We have papers to prove it. Narcotics. Money were, monies were forfeited. Article went to US to bring those documents out. You can't bring somebody who has falsified documents about his first century go. Somebody who, who was involved in Nambic, Bambic activities. Somebody who, who converted Lagos to his own self. Who took over a polytechnic, turned it into his own property. People who have no regard to education. Where is Wallace Oinka now? People should tag him with the bag of rice price just now. Tag Wallace Oinka with the current prices of things. Price of fuel, it, I mean, kidnapping, insecurity. Tag people. Tag them in Lagos. Tag them in Ekiti. Tag them in uh, Oyo. Tag them, those who did the tribal car. Tag Osibajo. Buhari should be behind bars as we speak. He will be behind bars. It's just a matter of time as we speak. So, brothers and sisters, there is no much ado. There's no further abracadabra. There's no further grandiloquence, laborare es orare or dukemes perpotramor. There's no need of speaking the language of Kabakaso. There's no way we can build Rome without talking about the foundations of Rome. Rome was not built in a day. So what we are seeing now is just as a result of we not listening to Odumengo, Oduku, the Ikemba, Inewi, an historian from Oxford University, who called everybody and said, let us talk. We can't live like this. The, the, the white man has come and gone. This is independence. Let's forget it all. But some people said, no. Yeah, we are. We are not one. The confusion is that everybody is arguing for their tribe. Finally, let me, let me, let me um, speak about Edo State. Before Niger Watch, we push the button. Edo State, for me, <laughs> Edo State has been kidnapped. Allegedly, Abaseki is spending money. The crisis behind APC, allegedly, Abaseki is behind it. He wants to dis dislodge them in APC. He has already bought, allegedly, Labour Party. Who is sponsoring Akpata? Who collapsed Edo State Labour Party and Obedient Movement? Where are the leaders? Where are the media soldiers that spoke for Mr. Peter Obi? Obaseki has bought them all. And allegedly, in 2007, allegedly, Obaseki's bank account in America had $11,000. As we speak, his account details, allegedly, is $500-something million. Allegedly. The guy has so much money. So far, he has spent more than $20 million trying to make Iswen Igodaro, you know, accepted by people because Iswen Igodaro has no political foundation. Those are the allegations going on. So it's okay. He's afraid of going to jail. He's afraid of being investigated. He doesn't have a father like Lokibunedio has. 
So because uh, Esama is protecting his son, obviously. Oshomole was being protected by, you know, the ruling party. So Anabaseki is opposition in a dust state. You see where the game is coming from. So we know what is going on. But we, who are the stakeholders, the citizens, we have our right to talk. You can't stop me from voicing out my verbal verbosity from the knowledge I have. And obviously, we are the ones suffering it. Nobody cares about us. Eight years of Obaseki's government is nothing to write to me about. The Legale Seaport was a fraud. International Airport Cargo, uh, whatever, was a fraud. Uh, Edo Best is Edo Worse. Our schools, the, the roof are leaking. The, uh, when it rains in Edo State, we can't drive. When you talk, your land is being, your house will be on government land. It will be demolished. There's fear. People have been swallowed up in fear. Even on social media, when you type, you have allegedly you have spent more than 300 million to recruit miscreants, mis misfits, people whose mind has been twisted to go on every platform, to go online and tackle anybody who speak about against his administration. Um, he has recruited people who carry a camera about to lie to people. So for me, we know the truth. Your children knows the truth, and the truth always prevails. A those state is, is in the hands of criminals. People don't care about us. I, I said it yesterday, Lucky did it, Oshomole did it, Oyengu did it, they just keep doing it. it the only good people we've had has been Osai Bavod, Bermudia, and Polonsho, and Brutali. May their souls rest in peace. Apart from that, it's a bang of coming to a, to a region themselves. I don't care about APC having problem, PDP being in peace, or Labour Party being swallowed up. I know that one day, leaders are going to spring up with ideology, people who are patriotic, people who are selfless, people who are inspired, People who, who wants to make a name and write their names in the sands of time. These are the kind of people I'm, I'm looking forward to. For now, this roller coaster of political parties ban battery themselves in public is to deceive people. We, we, have no, we, we have nothing to show for this government come, government go, and those are the ones suffering it. Niger Watch, as usual, this is my humble Logomaki, and my Logomaki, I live here without Logo Apacha. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alex. Thank you very much for that submission. But I'd like to quickly come in because I, I, I'm surprised to hear from you that Obaseki was only having $11,000 before he became governor in his uh, uh, account. Is that right? Is that what you said? In two, yes, yes. In 2007, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Allegedly. No, no. Uh, uh, $11,000. I will tell you. I will tell that you. That, 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 was, that was in his dollar accounts in America. People are monitoring everything about him. Oh, He's okay. aware. Yeah, that is in his dollar account. That is not his narrow account. Somebody right now has come up with information that the opacity is currently worth more than $520 million, as we speak. And presently, has spent close to $20 million trying to make sure ice cream comes allegedly, to power. Though. Allegedly, allegedly. Though. Allegedly. And he knows, as, he, as he's hearing me. Allegedly, he's hearing me too. Allegedly, he's hearing me. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for your submission. Thank you. Um, I like on Niger Watch, we have uh, about 400 plus watching us right there. But the like, you know, is still staggering on 213. It's too low. Uh, if you're listening to me right now, if you're not part of the satanic APC or satanic people that comes here all the time to, you know, uh, for the wrong reason, Please press on the like button. If you're fighting for the better Nigeria, you want Nigeria to work and you want our voices to go for all the wonderful submissions from Mr. Alice, Mr. Patricia, Mr. Jonathan, Mr. CBD have given on this platform. Let their voices go far. God bless you all. I'll call on Madam Luke. Madam Luke, it's good to have you here today. Good evening to you, man. Please talk to us. You have eight minutes. Mr. Elvis, you don't forget me. Or... And we've heard talk and since say you travel, you can't come back. After Madam Luke, I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because you see, before you call, say I show where you. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, man. Hello, Mr. Niger Watch. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Thank you very much. All right. Mommy Diaspora, uh, my fellow uh, panelists, the uh, commentators, viewers at large, I greet you. Happy Sunday. Uh, we have another beautiful day today, another start of the week. And um, I liked, uh, I'm going to start with Mr. Magnus Araka. The chicken has found, the chickens have finally come home to roost. Still on the lamentations of the um, Agbadonians or non agbadonians or the pro batists They're still standing on the mandate that they voted for. And um, hopefully we will wish them well and hope and um, make sure that they continue 
to receive the favor that they requested for from the Tinubu administration. Um, Dr. Yusuf has always been a vocal critic, even during the Buhari government. And he always let us know that the policies from the government do not favor Nigerians in any way. And he has said it again. However, he recognized that most of the Northerners voted for Tinubu and that um, he, they need, he needs to, um, Tinubu needs to recognize that he is acting as a one-term president because of the policies he's putting, to, putting in place that is not favoring the North. Once again, when Northerners speak, they have this self-centered entitlement. It's all about them. Even if he chooses to say Nigerians, he will always defer to the North. He will always represent the Northern interest. And that is what he says. Now, what I don't understand is, as part of the Arewa Forum, they should understand that Nigerians are not, and Nigeria is not only made up of Northern Nigeria. There are other people in Nigeria that should be represented in the interest of the whole country. Here you are, Arawa, saying we should, uh, the South South and the South East should come out and uh, protest with them. But then again, they're stopping trucks from coming to the South. So I don't understand this whole confusion of what they think they can do with the rest of the country. And I know what it is. It's only when it benefits them. When it's time to use every other part of Nigeria, they will do that. And Mr. Jonathan said it. Everybody did not listen to what Ojuku said. Gawan is there now smiling. They are all smiling because all they play is tribal politics. Buhari only got to be the president of Nigeria for eight years only because Tinubu, he came out and boasted. He went the first time, Olule. Second time, Lule. Third time, he came out to the open and Buhari was watching. So which brings me, I'm just trying to flow from Yusuf and his Northern Agenda to the Arewa, tie all of them together. And now, Mr. Niger was just asking why is, Tin, why is Buhari not in jail? Why can Buhari be in jail when it was Tinubu that put Buhari there in the first place? So what, what makes anybody think Buhari can go to jail? Has any past um, Nigerian president gone to jail in this country? All of them should be in jail, if you ask me. They should all be in jail because where we are today is a step-by-step is -step process of what this is, impunity. My name is Jonathan. Oh no, Jonathan is Jonathan is another is another because he did not get there by the people's choice. Maybe the second time. But I'm not happy about his policies either because he would have you know strengthened all parts of the all parts of Nigeria equally. And he should not have given in to Buhari's uh, chance, terrorist chance. You know, all the threats. Because if it was the Northerners that were in, in Jonathan's shoes. Southerners will not be able to protest like Buhari did, the baboon and the blood and all the riots and all those things they were doing. He should have calmed them down, but he just like dubbed the head and said, no, Nigerians' blood is worth... So the Nigerians' blood that are shedding now, what does that mean? Is it not the same thing? Are we not doing the same thing? So no, Jonathan, I would say, was grossly incompetent. Grossly incompetent. And his policies were absolutely weak. And he was pushed out in a very cowardly fashion because he did not address the security of the nation either. Instead, he was more like oil blocks sharing, continuing from where his boss, Obasanjo, uh, stopped from because he was only protecting himself. Look how wealthy his wife is now. Look at, look, look, look at what they're doing. Yes, there were policies more favorable because things were not as bad as they are now. So he had a cushion to fall back on. But it does, his, his regime was no less corrupt than what we have today. Now we just have impunity plus, plus, plus. So no, I won't excuse Jonathan because he didn't, he didn't address the security issues. 
strengthening the military, you know, why should the military be centralized in the north? In, it's only in, in Nigeria, a place like Nigeria, that you have a military that is only centralized in the north. It should be all over the country for checks and balances. Madam, look. Yes. Madam, look. Yes. Did you forget about um, uh, 2014 Confab? What did he do with it? Please tell me. I mean, Jonathan, after 2014 Confab, he abandoned it. Thank you. So you see, we're not even going to we're not going to dwell on Jonathan because I could go on and on and on, you know. But the here and now is what we're discussing, and Jonathan has led up to it, and that is why no past leader can ever be convicted. Madam, Madam, Luke. Luke. Madam, Luke. Yeah. sorry, sorry, man. We are, we are touching on a very sensitive subject. You see, the even the even the military. You see, the NDA that is in the north to be split into three the army in the north the navy in the south the air force in the west let them do it that way split it that's what we say. we're so saying that, that's the same thing we're saying that's the same thing. thing yes it's a very sensitive matter yes because right. you cannot you can't have everywhere in the north because then the rest of the south that is why they're busy holding the food in the north now we cannot go to farm because all the terrorists are down here killing all our farmers this is just a, I mean, this is just a hostile takeover. All because everything is centralized in the north. And when you feel Buhari will go to jail, the moment he starts touching Buhari, guess what? Those northern Boko Haram military will storm that Aso rock and eject this sleeping, sleeping, sleeping drug addict out of the out of office. Because he's praying, playing to the galleries, praying to them. So I will come to Anakpasa. You know, I tried to Google Anakpasa, and he has the same shady background as Tinubu. Place of birth unknown, career history unknown, education unknown. All we know is he's like a barrister. Wife unknown, children unknown. The only thing that brought him to limelight was his argument with Rufai. That is where his history started from. So you see, they didn't even give him anything from anything meaningful he's just a backing dog like reno all this this ginger gingerbread boys that going around looking for crumb the crumb eaters from the south south so i don't even want to you see discussing with someone like an officer will give you a headache because he doesn't stick to the issues and he like some like jonathan really said he just displays agberoic tendencies so having said that we will come to say People, somebody said that uh, the media is to be blamed for, for portraying Tilubu as sleeping. <laughs> Where he went to, is it a private place? Is that his living room? Anybody could have taken that picture, including other countries. So why is he blamed? Which media is he blaming? The, 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 were we there with him when he was sleeping? So these people will always find somebody to blame. Always find somebody to blame. The Tinubu that told us that he doesn't care about us, Jack Bain is not telling us that the Jack Bain should come back. He's doing everything to work. These people are so confused. It's not even funny. A Mephiele caused the economic crisis, not Tinubu. They will always find somebody to blame. You want to tell me a Mephiele will make decisions. Now they're telling me Buhari was an illiterate. He couldn't sign his own checks. He's... They will always find somebody to blame. These are people that are not saying that nobody should threaten anybody. Yet, APC is threatening the rights of rights of people. Uh, Unam the Khan was kidnapped, is in jail, and they're telling us that you don't have to threaten anybody. Meanwhile, everything they do is threat, gagging the media, preventing nurses from traveling, and they're telling us that nobody should threaten anybody. Now, because food is not coming to the south, but all the ones you're doing, you don't see it as a threat to the Nigerian populace. Isn't that funny? Finally, Edo State uh, uh, Governorship. All, ro all roads lead to Obaseki. I've said this many times on this forum. All roads lead to Obaseki. APC, Labour Party, they are not in this equation. All roads lead to Obaseki. So it's just to watch and see how it's going to play out. Thank you very much, my people. Uh, Mr. Nanja, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Luke, for that wonderful uh, submission. Thank you. Um, Mr. CBD, you want to say something? 
please, please, just uh, I just want to make a comment in response. Please, please, go ahead. To, uh, thank you. Uh, well, uh, I will still maintain that Jonathan is the best president Nigeria has ever had in recent time. And uh, anybody can disagree, that's just my own opinion. But the truth of the matter is that, look at the way Nigeria is right now. Which people were ready to fight for with Jonathan or for Jonathan then? And apart from that, we said something about uh, he shouldn't have listened to the threats. It was not a threat. I don't know if we, that was when they opened the, the gates in the north for all these their modern machines to come into Nigeria. It was not a threat. The, the, the thing was already happening. They were already, that was when all this thing, you know, uh, you know, reached the, 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 the highest or the zenith. So, okay. uh, no, sorry, just one second. So when you're saying Jonathan, Jonathan was dealing with something that if even right now, nobody still knows. If he tells you what he saw, or if he, if he tells people yes, what he saw, what you saw want, everybody, our mother, please. We are not interested on all those things, sir. Let him go. No, he's right. 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 We are very serious minded here. How can you be defeated, be speaking, becoming a spokesperson for someone who already ruled as a president in, in the country and the country is dilapidating and sinking every day? What are we talking about? If you see something you could not say as a president, you left it and in the process of you being silent, a lot of people lost their lives in that process. You, you, you are a block sucker. Coward. A coward. Coward. Uh, what are we saying? So he's the one that will go and uh, command the military himself. Yes, or, was it not the GC? Was, was it not the GC? What are you talking about? This man was the president. Ah. Please, if you don't know what that means, go and do your research first. We don't have the time for this research on, on this platform. Please. Uh -uh. A president is not a, a common person like you and I. Commander in chief of the armed forces. Uh -uh. I don't understand. What are we talking about here? The reason why you and I are in this situation where we are today is part of it. It's satanic. Let's say it how it is. Thank you, Mr. Uh, 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 Mr. Chuk, so big boy, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay. De Leo, de Leo.